More to Marketing. Welcome to More to Marketing, a podcast on marketing, product, and everything in between. I'm your host, Susan, and today I have a special guest. Our special guest is a huge expert in the space of partnerships. It's also a number one bestseller on Amazon. So I'd like to introduce Therese. So Therese, as I just mentioned, has a bestseller called Swap on Amazon. So do check that out. She's an expert marketer, partnership expert, keynote speaker, and supporter of all small businesses. So welcome, Therese. Thank you, Susan. Such a pleasure to be here. And, um, and hello to everybody listening. Fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, more than what I've just shared? <laughs> of course. So like lots of women, I am, um, you know, I'm a mum, I'm a wife, I'm a sister, I'm, uh, you know, a daughter. And all of that becomes this beautiful tapestry of what I've become from my career, the support network I have that allows me to have the professional life that I that I enjoy. So, so as you said, I love marketing. I love mm-hmm. partnerships. I have been in marketing for more than 20 years. It's nearly 30, but you know, uh, <laughs> and that's showing my age. But definitely marketing was something that when I studied it, it was, I'll say a creative discipline. And when I first started out in marketing, you would have an idea and you would take it to your boss and your boss could just say, I don't like it. Mm. Now marketing has become a data driven discipline. And with that data has incredible insights and opportunities. Mm. And one of those things that I was able to to see and capitalize on a long time ago was the power of actually working with another business who had the same customer as you and creating something that gave the customer an even better experience than if they dealt with the companies individually. So that's what I love to do. And so, as you said, I give me an opportunity. I will jump on stage and I will tell you. I will tell you in my book. I will tell you in, an, in a one-on-one session. I will, And I have been a small business quite a few times. I started my first small business in my 20s and really kind of amped it up um, so it was around the world in, in about five countries and I, I've sold that I've started other ones I've had other ones that have failed and during that whole process I've also been a mentor for women in business so for about 16 years I've helped other women I guess navigate that that path so it's something I feel really strongly about I think the decision to start your own business is massive and small business owners are brave and nimble and you know fast and agile and they are a hundred good things Mm. and so I want to be the person that supports those people to make the most commercial opportunity that gives them the you know the objectives that they want to meet whether that is a business objective and financial or whether that is actually a personal objective from a lifestyle point of view uh, for their family mm-hmm. so that's that's who I am in a nutshell I love it and I love the focus on collaboration it's just uh, making everything better for everybody I love that I love win-win situations absolutely so I would love to delve more into your topics of expertise. So about finding the right partnerships and collaborations, what steps should people start looking at and how do you go about that? Great. So when we think about partnerships, just to, I just want to make it super clear. So just this is not a financial partnership as in someone taking equity in your company and, be, and becoming an owner of your company. This is where we talk about And that's got all these names. So it could be called a strategic marketing partnership. Sometimes it's called a strategic alliance. Sometimes it's called a a JV or a joint venture. Sometimes it's called a brand collaboration. But essentially what it is, is when two businesses, as I said, come together and they create something, something, that something is marketing. They create a marketing campaign um, or an asset that helps their mutual customer. And in the process, they can both, both companies can gain and grow. So when we talk about how to find the right partnership, the first thing is about what your objective is. So if you are a new business and 
it, you might be in a, a physical location, a geographical location, that might be around brand awareness. It might be getting people to actually know that your doors are open and you mm. exist. Whereas an e-commerce company, it could be around putting, you know, pushing traffic to their site. Uh, for a um, d- you know data-driven company, it could be around creating content or even in terms of leadership. So you might be an accountant and you actually want to be known as the accountant who helps small businesses use their equity to buy a premises or something like that. So, so what is the opportunity that you can provide? And so when you're looking for a partnership, the first thing you need to do is kind of really analyze like what, what are you trying to do? Is it about reach? So that's getting people to know you exist. Is it about credibility, which is getting people to know that you are a, a leader or an expert or someone that they can trust? And and the third thing is, you know, it's about differentiation. There are a thousand of all of us. There's a thousand photographers. There's a thousand pizza shops. There's a thousand accountants. You know, we all have businesses and roles that that lots of people do. So then from our customers, we want to stand out. We want to differentiate. We want to show how we can help our customer so they're attracted to us. So partnerships are also a way that you can differentiate from a business that's just like yours. And when we do differentiate, then what we find is that we can also be more profitable. We can, we can stop fighting on the, on the sense. You know, we can actually, we, if we've got a product, then we can actually charge what we should be charging for it mm-hmm. and not have to discount that product and discount ourselves or our service because we've established a reach, we've gained some credibility and we've gained some differentiation. Yep. I think one of the the biggest fears I'd assume that would be for small businesses in particular is the time and cost involved in going about looking for this right collaboration or partnership. Because as you said, you don't want to reduce your cost of what you sell your product for, but then they're also looking at their actual P&L and the cost of doing business. Is it going to cost you money to actually go out and find these collaborations or partners? This is a really big thing for me, hence why I have a book called Marketing Without Money, because it is it is really about collaborations do not have to cost one cent. Now, they're not free in terms of what you are trading is the assets that you have built in your business. So if you have a physical presence, as in a store, a showroom, an office, somewhere that people walk in the door, then an asset is your physical space. Who hasn't got a physical space? Example, I'm working on a collaboration at the moment for two small businesses. They, uh, one is an artist, one has a furniture brand. The furniture brand is in a different state and wants to have this amazing evening for interior designers to come and see her product. Mm-hmm. The artist has a gallery and is doing amazing, beautiful work that's actually going to appear um, on TV and media quite soon. And so his his star is rising. So I put the two together and said, why don't you actually both collaborate in terms Mm. of you have a physical space that that the furniture company could use in, in your state, in your location. She has an amazing connection and database with interior designers. That's not something that you have and you would like to know a lot of interior designers to get them to know your artwork. And what this will cost you is a few bottles of champagne, you know, some cheese and pickies from Woolworths yep. and you're both in. So you're both using your own assets. So the furniture company, reputation, credibility with interior designers and her database. And the artist is using the physical location, the gallery space in that other state mm. to create a, a campaign together where they're both going to benefit. And for the interior designer who attends, they get to not only see the new furniture, but actually an, an amazing emerging artist mm. that they can then um, you know, show and sell to their clients. 
Well, that just sounds like a, a perfect type of collaboration where you think they're so far removed, but as you said, they've got the same type of base that they're wanting to connect with. Yes, and that's a whole the whole thing about collaboration. It is not how how similar you are in terms of or a natural combination. So, for example, just say, you know, wine and cheese. Like, yep, okay, wine and cheese, great. Mm-hmm. But it's actually around who has the same audience who has the same customer as you so you could be you could have a dance studio you know so and that so who who is coming to a dance studio well first of all parents Mm -hmm. of children so who else is marketing to parents of children it could be a tutoring service it could be a clothing shop it could be a hair life Mm -hmm. salon you know, it could be, so it's, it's the collaboration is about your target audience mm. and what collectively you could create to actually help them to have a better experience. Yep. And so again, like that could be, imagine if you're, you know, like you're a pool builder and then you actually collaborated with somebody who came and was able to clean the pool, test the water. Mm. Then the customer is like, oh my gosh, not, I don't know what to do with a new mm-hmm. pool. And, and they say, well, this is, this is a, a business that we love working with. They'll keep your pool looking amazing. Mm. And you the can customer, even, yeah, they've got a great decision. You can even build on that as well. Like the pool example, it can be, okay, we'll put your pool in, but here's a landscaper we recommend. Absolutely. And, and as you said, and then it could also be maybe somewhere that sells pool toys. So you could build that out even further. Then you've got shade cloths. And I can see how that can really build out that it's all one almost like an ecosystem where you all help each other absolutely and they are the best partnerships when you've got multiple companies who come together and my one of my favorite examples was uh when six companies six very very small companies as in single person businesses Mm. kind of came together and they created a competition the the customer that the winner won a thirty thousand dollar prize and what this was, was six companies contributing, I'll say, a prize of $5,000 in value, which was actually like a few hours with somebody, you know, or a, you know, or a plan or, it, you know. And so these six businesses, just to give you an idea, one was uh, somebody who got the idea of a book out of your head mm-hmm. and into a Word document. There was an accountability coach who actually mm-hmm. kept you on track. There was a um, publisher who took your Word document and made it into a book. Yep. There was a photographer who took a great headshot for you so you could, you know, use it on your book and promote it. There was a printer who made that book into a paperback that you could physically hold. Yep. And there was a videographer who created a book trailer to sell your book. Oh, beautiful. Now, all of those six companies have the same target customer mm-hmm. in terms of somebody who's interested in publishing a book. Yep. But none of them compete. Mm. Exactly. And when you think about that, those six companies have now created a database. So they have a database that they can all use mm. to talk to that customer about their individual service. But that was a competition. That could have easily been, imagine if they did a weekend workshop, mm. like a physical play where they all got together and for one weekend you came together and learned everything you needed to know and maybe they took your photo for your headshot Mm. and they created a little bit of video for you and and did all of this thing so you walked away with a week from the weekend with an you know an an end result or what if it was actually a digital collaboration where they were all creating articles they were all you know interviewing each other on podcasts and actually creating written content Mm. and was sharing social feeds and and actually coming together and creating a digital infrastructure. So, so your choice of word is perfect in terms of a great marketing collaboration is when you're using everything in your toolbox, mm. right? And it, so that's how it differs from an influencer. You know, so people probably have heard of, you know, influencer marketing, which is a brilliant, amazing lever that you can pull but with an influencer it is usually uh, a person who has influence usually on one platform Mm. could be more but that it is about and that's almost like a business to a a person that goes out to their audience when you do a brand to brand collaboration that brand has a database that brand might have a location Mm. that brand probably has procedures 
that brand has collateral. It has influence. They might be part of business groups. So it is using everything in your toolbox that you know that you've built in your business to work with another business who's got the things that you don't have. Exactly. And you've you've reminded me of this group called the Mark Alliance. It's mostly based in, the, the I believe, the US region where specialists in their field are all part of this alliance and you have to be at a certain reputation, um, a specialty of field, all those kind of individual pieces to be part of that. And then they all do share and influence with each other and, and make sure that they are contributing to the greater good of the Mark Alliance itself. Great. And there's local version, not the mm-hmm. same, but local versions. Like you've got things like BNI, which is like a networking group, and they exist to actually refer each other. So you're not actually getting trying to get business in that room. You're showing all the businesses in that room what you do. So then mm-hmm. they talk to their customers, friends, family, acquaintances, and say, I know someone who should work with. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the, and again, like I love referral marketing in terms of that's how most of us exist. Mm-hmm. Our customers usually come to us because we know stuff and they say, like, for example, I'm in marketing. So they, people come to me and they say, do you know someone who can build a website? Mm-hmm. Do you know someone who can do SEO? Do you know someone who can do PR? Yep. Do you know an event organizer? So they ask me for referrals or, or companies that I think are good that they could engage with. Beautiful. Referral, put referral and partnership together in terms of how could I take that referral? So just say I'm always referring uh, a PR agency that I love. I think they do great work. Amazing. So what if we leverage that? What if we leverage that referral partnership and we actually created content from it? Mm -hmm. So we created a little series, a a podcast series, a blog series, a a YouTube series where we both talked about our specific, um, you know, specialties and actually released that. And, and what that is, so, but so uh, I'm talking to a PR company at the moment. So what PR company is great at getting editorial, getting you in the media. Yep. What I'm great at from a marketing point of view, because I've worked with TV shows for decades, is I'm very good at taking your 15 seconds of fame and making it into a year of marketing. So together, if we work together, just say we had um, the same customer, which we do, then I could say, go to the PR company first, secure the media, and then I will show you how to maximize Mm. that across all your assets on a long-term basis. And so that the things that we could create, as I said, articles, podcasts, um, you know, videos, we could create a whole lot of things together. So it's not just relying on me to say, I know someone, it's the marketing, the content is giving us the ability to have always on marketing. Mm-hmm. And it's always going back and just really emphasizing the work that has been done in that 15 seconds of fame and really stretching it out, like you said. Absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, that's what marketing is, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, you, marketing is not one message once on one platform and then we forget about it. Marketing is reinforcing. Mm-hmm. I mean, Google's Moment of Truth talks about. Uh, you know, 7-11-4, so seven hours. People need to consume seven hours of content um, across four different platforms with 11 different types of interactions in terms Mm. of medium. So they could read, watch, see, click, do, download, something, something. So 7-11-4 is something that Google has come up with. But what that means is exactly what you're saying. It is about how do you... If I don't see that program that night and I, or I blink or I'm making a cup of tea and I miss that moment, then people assume, oh my gosh, I've been on TV. My my website's going to melt down. No, no, no. You need to grab that 15 Mm -hmm. seconds of fame and you need to milk it for into an article, into a podcast, into, uh, you know, five tips, into, into all these different things that you can actually use over a long period of time to capitalize on that one great thing. 
Exactly, exactly. And and you've touched on a whole pile of different partnerships there, but can you actually talk to us about the types of partnerships themselves just in a little bit more detail? Because you've given loads of examples, but let's actually talk about, I suppose, more the theory or um, you know what I mean about yes, the actual partnership absolutely. itself. Yeah, there's three main types of partnership. So one is where you use your product or your service. So that could be where you're doing co-branded activity uh, so as in a um, Nike and Tiffany have got together mm. and they created co-branded products so it has both brands on the product but a very simple example of that is uh, you know when you might go to an event and you get a goodie bag and it's actually got a product what we do with a product or a service is we want to get it into the hands of our ideal customer mm. for them to try it so you could actually have samples or testers, or trials. Mecca or, does that well. Yeah, exactly. So, so first, first partnership is when who has got the customers that you would like to get, require, mm-hmm. and so how could you collaborate using your physical product or service? The next one is when you use your knowledge or your IP to create a digital collaboration. So this is particularly suited if, you have, if you're a professional. So if you are an interior designer, if you are an architect, if you are an accountant, if you're a personal trainer. So the things that we do as a service. And so that personal trainer might know the six-week program to get a better body after having a baby or mm-hmm. how to um, recover from an injury or something like that. So that knowledge that they are, they have in their discipline, you could create a partnership with another company. So, for example, with the personal trainer, it could be actually with a nutrition company mm. or a food company. So, and again, what you're what you're trading, what you're using, leveraging, is your knowledge or your IP to teach a customer something another person's customer so then they will know you like you trust you and come over and try to experience your service and the last one is when I touched on before it's where you use a physical a physical location or a physical experience so this is where we have trade shows this might be a pop-up in so you might have a location mm-hmm. uh, these are great if you've got like a retail store. So retail store might actually have an artist come in or it might be, um, you see this like when you go and buy a bottle of wine and one of the vineyards is, is in the wine shop and actually saying, would you like to test our wine? Uh, so when you've got a physical location that people can walk into and they get to try and experience, meet you, talk to you and create a memory from it. Yep. And obviously memories are super powerful because we can we can test, we can trial, we can talk. Amazing for e-commerce companies mm. because sometimes e-commerce companies, they have this beautiful, beautiful customer base, but then when they actually do a real life activation, then they're like, oh, I got to meet the owner. She's so cool. Oh, mm-hmm. I feel really connected to this now. And, and I got to touch the product and see the quality and hear about it and so there's a there's a a bigger connection a more trustability yes Mm. yeah an emotional connection so they're the three so one you use your product or your service two you need use your knowledge or your ip to create Mm -hmm. something digital and the third one is you when you create an in-person experience yep and i i personally have the three of them i do love the last one i do love to to touch and feel myself absolutely i think and especially after COVID, I feel like that is the biggest one that can have the biggest impact mm. because I think we are craving um, that that experience, that that connection. Mm. Um, I, I mean, great, amazing, digital, so good, right? We're all on digital, we're all connecting, but there's something more memorable, more powerful about doing it in person. Exactly. 100% agree. But 
what are your top tips for finding the right partner? So you've given us, like I said, many examples, but what would be your best, say, two top tips that you'd give for someone who's actually doing this for the first time and doesn't even know where to start? Yeah, great. First one would be, as I said, you're already referring people, right? Like you've already got somebody that you're always talking about and it could be anything from a piece of software to a a service like a photographer that you always use, someone that you always kind of naturally refer to. Uh, It could be a coffee shop. It could be... so. So the first thing I would say, if you're starting training wheels on, would be look at the companies that you're already referring to Mm. because you've already got that relationship. They know you exist. They know that they've got customers because you've been driving your customers into their store or service. And go and have a curious conversation with them and say, hey, you know, I love your business and I'm always referring customers to you. I'd really like to amp it up. I think Mm -hmm. that we should do something together. So we're actually referring each other all the time, but it is, you know, it's more definite. So instead of it being ad hoc, verbal, let's actually create a uh, a, like a a page on my website where I've got your details or let's create an afternoon or let's create a webinar together something that is even an article yeah exactly and it can and as you say if you're on your training wheels this can be so small it could be why don't I create an article for you to send out on your email and you create an article for me that I send out on my email or you write something and I'll post it on social. Mm. It could be super, super simple. So don't, you know, don't, and, and, and I guess in terms of if people are like, oh, that's a bit scary, to contacting another business and asking them if they want to work together, think of it in, time, in terms of where's the easy yes. Like mm. if you were saying, um, so with the furniture example, I know my, that furniture company has leather furniture. A question that I always get asked is how do I, like after my kids spill something on it or like how do I clean my leather furniture? Mm. And so they always refer this particular kind of, you know, like dry cleaner, steam cleaner person who can come out if, it, if it's like a big, you know, a big yeah. accident. But what if you actually created an article on, oh my gosh, the red wine has gone over my new leather lounge, you know, what do I do? Yep. And so then that is helping the furniture company because they are showing you that you can troubleshoot if something happens and it's promoting the other company who can actually fix that problem if you don't want to fix it yourself. So just think of it in terms of that. Where's the easy yes? What would be a really easy thing that you can do? A really easy article, Mm -hmm. you know, share something that's very low touch, but it helps both companies and the customer, ultimately the customer. I think the other thing for me in this example is the first time you do it, you don't have to give a discount. It's an introduction to show who you are, what your business does, see how that performs. Then maybe in the future, do another one where you might do a discount or a special offer or a meet and greet or wherever it might be. You don't always have to give away value of your product. Absolutely not. I mean, I, I always try to never discount because, Mm. I think that's an easy trigger. You can always offer a discount, but but I think it for for partnerships, this is people love partnerships when brands come together and do something mm. interesting, chat worthy, shareable, because it has this brag value. I got this because it was a limited edition. I got this, I got mm. to meet this person, I got to get someone's sign book, I got to, and so. It's the brag value that has the value. Exactly. I can save $2, but will I actually care about $2.20, you know, whatever. Whereas if I've got something that is bigger and better and more alluring and more brag worthy, then I I'm not, I don't really care. You know, Mm -hmm. the discount doesn't seem as attractive. So this is where, again, it's like, what could you do? Like what, you know, and this is where we see the concept of marketing where we say why don't we have a discovery call or would you like to actually spend some time with me or have a would coffee. you like 
yeah, would you like to me to get under the bonnet of your business and I can do this for mm-hmm. you? Or so the the ability to have a an expert or somebody who's great at you know getting stains out or personal training or that photographer or whoever you are that that ability to share that expertise is has a huge perceived value more so than saying I'll give you five percent you know exactly yeah and I I think that's probably what I'm seeing a lot of small business maybe not doing it as well is they are just giving away value and not realizing that there's a value in itself in the partnership that they don't have to give anything away yet. Yes. So I would say small businesses truly believe that they don't have anything to offer. That is, could not be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. So I've worked for very big, big, big global brands, big listed companies. And when, so even think of, I'm just going on a tangent, think of Commonwealth Bank, huge, you know, I don't know, billion dollar company, right? Like big, big company. What do they have? They have an innovation lab. Why do they have an innovation lab? Because they need to get small businesses to create different things to different markets to show agility. The the great thing about being a big brand, obviously, lots of money, lots of resources. The bad thing about being a big brand, not nimble. You know, it takes time. Very, very slow. So when I have always worked with big businesses I've worked to collaborate with smaller brands Mm. because they get stuff done really fast they see an opportunity they want to grab it with both hands they're hungry they will work harder jump higher you know and so the big brand has all of these assets but what is transferable is the big brands get to borrow their innovation their Mm. spark their enthusiasm and also small brands usually have a, a you know a figurehead a leader um, and that is incredibly alluring because big brands sometimes are quite faceless mm. um, and so to actually put a small brand in front of their big brand and say look at what our customers said. like this is Bob meet Bob he's one of our customers yep. this is what Bob does then it makes them a lot more attractive. It makes them a lot more emotionally connectable. It's all that relatability, isn't it? Absolutely. Because sometimes we see big businesses and they're just so big mm-hmm. and we just, you know, they're just, they're, just, they're a mountain. Yep. Um, and so when we see them working with smaller businesses, then we're like, wow, they really support small business. They're really doing great things. Oh, I like the story about how Bob uses your product and this is how he uses it. I'm a bit like Bob. Mm-hmm. I could be like Bob. Yep. And, and so it's this beautiful connectivity. Yep. No, that's fantastic. I love that. And that and that probably brings us perfectly into the next example of what is, what is a deal and how do you go about these deals that you do when you're working with your potential new partnership? great so a deal can be as i said a referral partner is a deal i'll talk about you you talk about me not structured not written down not accountable when we do a brand partnership if there is money being invested so for example if i was uh i always talk about when four pillars gin and go to skincare came together and they created the new go to gin So when you think about that, they would have had to invest it in the new label, you know, like they would have invested to Mm. actually come up with that product. Now, when you do a partnership where there's there's money that needs to be invested, you should absolutely get legal advice. You should absolutely structure it because there, you know, there could be a lot of money lost, you know. But when when you're doing, when you're like the yoga studio in the coffee shop and you're like, hey, why don't you do a discount, like a a voucher for a free coffee and I'll do a voucher for a free class and we'll put it in each other's location. Then I say that is like, that's a word document. That's like Mm -hmm. a heads of agreement. That is something written on email or word that just kind of says, here's what we both are agreeing to. I am agreeing that every person that comes into my coffee shop, I will say hey have you tried the new yoga studio here's a voucher if you want to try it and you're going to do this every time someone comes into Mm -hmm. the yoga studio you're going to say hey did you love the class why don't you go and get a free coffee and so you both agree 
And then, for example, then you could say, I agree to put you in my newsletter once, you know, one time, and I agree to do two posts, and I agree to do this. That is, that's a word document. That's a, that's a, it's an agreement in principle. And when I say that, you put it in a document because it's like, it's like a handshake. It's like, mm. it, and it's transparency. Where deals go wrong is when people went, oh, I thought mm. that you would do this and this and this. I thought or I assumed you meant this yep. and this and this. And so that's when people go, oh, well, I, this went bad because mm. I assume you were going to do something and you didn't do it. So the word document is so everybody is knows what each other are doing. And as I said, this is not any money changing hands. This is like, I will, you know, I'll give you a 200 word article and three pictures and you put it in your newsletter. And I say that I'm going to get it to you by the end of August. So therefore it can be in your September newsletter. So everything's mapped out. So then there's no, there's no transparency. It's like, oh, I thought, I thought you meant the August newsletter. Oh, Mm -hmm. you know, so the, so when you do a deal, it is about what can I give and what will I get back? Like, yep. so you have two parties and you're saying, I'll put you in a newsletter, I'll do the flyer, I'll use your furniture in my trade show, um, you know, so the artists in the furniture. So just say they both did a trade show exhibition. So I'll do this. This is what it'll look like. Mm-hmm. And if anybody asks, I'll give them the flyer. So it's just communicated so there's no there's no way that you can assume anything and therefore get upset. Just remo- removes all that ambiguity. It's just, this is what we're getting, black and white. And I, I'd assume also, because this is me now assuming, that in this document, it also talk about trackability as well so that you can know if it's successful or not. For sure. So obviously you and I marketers, this is like we we, we live and die on data, right? Exactly. Like this is our like, <laughs> you know, Oh, so when we when we think about the coffee shop and things, obviously you've got a voucher. You want to make sure that you're you're actually when the voucher comes to you, you're 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 physically noting that somehow, whether it's through a QR code or some other device. When we are doing a digital collaboration, then we obviously have a unique code or link that we can use to see how many people are coming through to our website from that piece of content. The, the reason that we want to do that more so than anything else is we could, we could actually in our uh, deal, we could say newsletter, social media, flyer, and we could have three trackable codes. And for example, we could go, geez, that flyer generated 80% of our new business. Mm-hmm. So do you know what? Let's double down on flyers. Yeah, credo do- rule. Exactly. So the trackability is one, it's about your ability to know what works and what doesn't. Yep. And But a great partnership is when you go back and you share the results and say, this is what happened, this is what happened. Mm-hmm. Because when you put a deal together and then you execute on that deal and you create an amazing partnership, one, you want to go back to that partner and show them how clever they were for, for partnering with you. Show them, like show them all the great things that happened from their one decision. Mm-hmm. And in that, I call that a success pack. And in that success pack, that's almost like your case study to get the next partner. Yep. Because it shows that you were able to, uh, the ideation, you were able to come up with the idea, you were able to deliver you are able to track and demonstrate mm-hmm. and therefore you have a learning. And so you can then package that up as a bit of a case study, go to the next partner and say, hey, I just did this with the yoga studio or the accountant or the personal trainer or the pool builder and I would love to work with you. This is how we could do it. No money changing hands. We have a Word document with the deliverables. We use the assets that we've already got in our business and we give and we do all of this in the spirit of giving the customer the ultimate win exactly and because you're reusing everything the small businesses don't have to invest anywhere near as much time because they've already got most of it sitting there it might be a couple of updates to maybe an end date or it could be just a url change for a code or something like that but it's really minimum work once you start rolling this out to other partners absolutely you could have a coupon that you did in canva and then you're literally just changing as you said the link 
So, or the QR code, just a new link, you know, just a new QR code that you can do in Canva. Um, but it's so you can track it and it just, you just go through Bitly or whatever, just a way for you to track that. And exactly as you said, it's still got your colors, your everything. You can mm. just hit print and off you go. Of course, then if you have got something really simple like Canva, you can drop your partner's logo mm. on that piece of collateral as well. And then, as I said, that could be a digital. So it wouldn't it cost you five minutes of time on Canva and you're done. Or it could be that you, you might actually. So this is where I'm saying sometimes it's not free, as in you might decide that you want to print those flyers to give mm. to the yoga studio. Well, that's not free. That costs a little bit of money. But it's not a, it's not a huge investment. Yeah. You know, it's a small investment. And the money, you're not paying the yoga studio to give out your flyers you're doing a partnership. So they they do something for you, you do something for them. Exactly. No, I love it. No, thank you so much for going through all these. I do have, um, I will give you an opportunity first. Is there anything else you'd love to add about collaboration and partnership before I go to my final question? <laughs> Look, as you can hear, I'm, uh, I could talk about this all day and all night. <laughs> um, but I guess if I wanted to leave you with one piece of, you know, advice, it would be just, just start like just Mm. what's the worst thing that can happen you know it's it's hard being a business owner by yourself it is it is way more fun working with people who know and love your customer as much as you do and the the rewards are there again just be really transparent really upfront this is what I'm going to do this is what you're going to do but just start and just reach out to, as you said, the, the just the companies that you're already dealing with, that you're already good friends with. So it's a nice, easy yes. Mm-hmm. And you're off and running. Love it. Love it. Uh, final question for you. If you were a brand, what brand would you be and why? Oh, what a great question. Oh, um, the first thing that popped into my head was Boost. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to say boost because that's what I thought of but I was thinking am I Chanel and I was thinking no I'm way too daggy you could um, be both <laughs> could be a collaboration between I, boost and Chanel <laughs> I've had someone that's listed five so <laughs> right I think for me there a, a brand is something you feel it it's way more than a logo it's a hundred mm. things that add up to the way a customer remembers you and so I feel like I feel like there's, I feel like, like, I really like Boost Juice in terms of they have this really great experience. It's very individual, very customized, gets you what you want quickly. Uh, you know, I mean, I remember when Boost first started and, you know, and it was like $6 for like, you know, a smoothie. And yep. that was, that was like a more lot. than 20 years ago, right? Yeah. That was a lot of money. I mean, now I think it's like $9 or $10, right? So, um, but it was, it was aspirational, but it was aspirational in terms of lifestyle. It was aspirational in terms of health. Mm-hmm. It was um, colorful. It was run by this fantastic woman. So I think for me that the, the characteristics of that are, are aspirational for me. That is mm-hmm. something that I would like to be seen as is, you know, as as nimble and bright and uh, agile and, um, you know, a good price point. Helping others. Helping others. Exactly. So yep. I'm going to go with Boost. I love it. I love Boost. <laughs> Thank you so much, Therese. I really, I really enjoyed today. We've learned so much, particularly um, when we're going into partnerships and collaborations to analyze what we actually want to do first so we understand the purpose. So going back into reach credibility and differentiation and then what type of partnership might work best depending on what we do so if we've got our product or service maybe we could do something with those items themselves physically if we're more about our knowledge and ip because we're more service-based how can we bring that to to life maybe through teaching and the third option that we had to talk through was also the physical experience and making something magical in that tactile experience and of course This is all about experimentation. There doesn't have to be a huge amount of costs involved in this. It's about following the passion, following who you naturally refer to already and just having a coffee to start with and seeing what that might go to. So thank you again so much. 
I've really loved having you on here. For anyone that wants to know more, the book will be in the link. So you have to check out Swap. Swap is a number one bestseller on Amazon. But again, thank you so much for coming today. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I mean, I think we, we're both kindred spirits in terms of we want, we love marketing, we, we love branding, we want to see businesses succeed and stand mm. out. So it has been an absolute pleasure. So thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you. And for anyone who isn't already subscribed, please make sure to subscribe to More to Marketing to hear more fantastic podcasts. More to Marketing. <laughs>